On today's episode, we have a huge Never Not Working segment where we break down players that you might want to target for the rest of the season. Of course, hit all that injury news and we get into some matchups. And then, in the middle of the show, we get a big breaking news moment. Stay tuned. Don't miss a moment. Subscribe to this channel. Leave us a comment and enjoy. The Fantasy Footballer Studio is brought to you by Samsung Galaxy. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Hey, this is head coach Hugh Jackson, the greatest coach of all time. You're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your host, Andy Holloway. Jason Moore and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. It's football time. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. He scared me a little bit. I don't blame you because we've all been trying to forget Thursday night football. It's just been Thursday but, night. But tonight... We got a game. I hope so. We might have a game. We should have a game. I mean, I hope so. I I realize I realize that it's it's uh, it's dicey and there's ways this could go wrong, but there are ways this could go spectacularly right. Yeah, I choose to believe that's the way it's going to go. Let's be glass half full, guys. Yeah, this will be fun. I mean, Lamar Jackson, Tom Brady, all full. Whoa, I like it. Water everywhere yes. it is yeah. overflowing oh, messy kitchen i need so many brawny paper towels Whoa, not Whoa, a sponsor not a, yeah. <laughs> Hold on. well what? no regular cheap off brands <laughs> can't handle this amount of optimism oh my gosh <laughs> not a sponsor <laughs> it would be great if it was though man <laughs> uh welcome in thursday october 27th the fantasy footballers <laughs> podcast andy mike and jason the deucers are here as well hey there's a lot of black shirts here in it's, the building? It's slimming. Yeah. Right, right. Uh, let's hope we get a good Thursday night football game. We've got matchups today, never not working, starts of the week, a lot to talk about. The fantasy football world, we're moving into week eight. And uh, the contagious world of trading has uh, transpired in some of our leagues recently. Oh, yes. Yeah. When, when one team gets a trade done, the, the you know, I think I heard Brooksy in the other office saying he's getting a little FOMA with these trades he going through in, in Dynasty. He wants oh, in on those trades. I, I could tell Papa Josh was getting FOMA. Oh, Papa Josh was getting oh, FOMA. Oh, yeah. You know, it really is. People I'm ask, here. I'm right here, Josh. Make me an offer. <laughs> People ask us all the time, like, oh, my league doesn't do a lot yeah. of trades. How do I get it? And and I think we gave this advice one time, but it seems like it actually might be true. Which is, if you want to get your leagues to start doing trades, just get one go. Just make a bad trade. Just go <laughs> get one started, because then it's like take the ball one for rolls. The league every t- take one for the league, but then you'll you'll have two more trades in the next day because it's in all the leagues we're in, whenever there's a trade that goes through, it's like. Well, I know what I'm doing today. Crack yep. the knuckles, get to work. Trades are a flowing. Twitter at the FF Ballers. If you want to follow the show, we're on Instagram, Instagram.com slash fantasy footballers. It's time to get working. Never not working. Presented by Head and Shoulders, Scalp Shield Technology. Available at Walmart. Well, speaking of trade season, this is the time where we are looking ahead, and this is the exact week, the exact moment in time where we have what I believe is the best data for strength of schedule, for schedule-adjusted strength of schedule, where we have less than you know half of the year, but so much of the data where we can say we have a good grasp on what teams are good against which positions and what the schedule looks like going forward with enough time left for it to make an impact. So that's why today we are looking at trade targets not specific to player names, but to the remaining schedule left, and we're going to take a look at each position and say, here are the top three teams that have the cakiest walk forward for fantasy point scoring. The cakiest. You just, you're going to walk through a layer of icing. It's going to be delicious. Okay. Yep. No, I'm in. 
I'm what, in with that whole explanation. I feel like walking through a cake would be difficult. Delicious is the word you're looking for. But it's for. just it's spongy and you'd be falling. It's like walking some, through the snow. Which can be very difficult. <laughs> they, in not, fact, they have special shoes just so well, you, you got Well, you got your cake shoes on. I mean, I'm not saying you're just <laughs> in your is. Nikes, but, you know, you got your cake shoes on and let's walk through some cake. So let's talk They're quarter. just forks <laughs> yeah. that I put on my feet. That's right. Uh, all right. So quarterbacks. Yes. Let's, best matchups. Let's start right with the juiciest, scariest thing on uh, <laughs> yesterday's show. We had the sleepers and I toyed and toiled with the thought of this this comatose sleeping quarterback, Russell Wilson. Unlimited. The Denver Broncos have the number one juiciest <sighs> schedule for the rest of the season for the quarterback position when, it, when adjusted for the teams they have played. It is... It's really good. It's really, really, really good. There's literally one bad week the rest of the time, assuming you have a Week 17 championship... Can you – I mean, he's on waivers, right? You don't have to trade right. for Russell Wilson. He should be on waivers. That's where he belongs. Would you pick him up and stash him in the hopes that you see what you've seen a couple times in Russell Wilson's career, which is he sucks for a while and is great for a while? Small change of language. Not in the hopes of, but just in case it does happen. That's how I would look at it. I think they, there's still uh, just a handful of weeks we've seen Russ in Denver. I know it's been – cringy on every level but just in case i would keep right. my eye on if i didn't have one of the main guys all right we're going to skip to the number three schedule here first because it's a similar level of quarterback jimmy garoppolo and the san francisco 49ers now the next two weeks are still not great it's actually uh, a, a bad matchup this week against the rams and then they're on their bye but after that from weeks 10 through 17 that is a name you just need to be aware of because jimmy garoppolo has low-key been a top-ten quarterback the last three weeks. So weird. And he, now he has Christian McCaffrey to do stuff with the ball out of the backfield that will count towards his numbers. Justin Herbert, with the second-best schedule to finish the year, should be getting Keenan Allen back, somebody to be aware of. That is the main name to me. It's it's the trade-for target. If you get Keenan Allen back, uh, obviously Mike Williams is going to be gone for a month, but it, they can withstand that. It, at the end of the season – Herbert's someone that you had to pay a lot of money for up front, and unfortunately, uh, it has not worked out. He has not paid off on that draft capital. But if you can trade for him for less, and then he does work out the rest of the way. We saw that a couple years ago. Mike, you did this with Lamar Jackson. People paid up for Lamar Jackson in the draft. He sucked mm -hmm. uh, relative to the draft cost. You traded for him because of his schedule at the end of the year, yes. and then you won a championship. Yeah, the quarterback schedule, it matters a lot, and so does the talent. So I think Garoppolo could be a nice streaming story, but if I don't have a locked-in secure quarterback, I'm looking at Russell Wilson. I I, I buy into the, I'm going to stash him just in case he turns things around, and the trade for Herbert I think is also a good play. The best three schedules for running backs, Miami, Buffalo, and the Titans. So you're talking about Raheem Mostert, talking about Devin Singletary, with all of the questions of which game he's relevant in, and then you're talking about the Yeti himself, Derrick yeah. Henry. You're not getting him. No, but if you have him, you got a big yeah. stupid <laughs> smile on your face. Yeah, in enjoy the upcoming schedule here. Mostert is incredibly interesting because I think it feels like, you know, the the Twitter sphere, the fantasy football community as a whole, is still not in on Mostert the way that we should be. Where it's you'll you'll look back next year and go, man, what a fantastic season that Raheem Mostert had. How did we not get on board? It, because it, it, because it's Raheem Mostert, he's this wasn't the plan for the Dolphins. This should not be happening. But it is happening, and so I think you need to remove that name. And it might have been at, the plan. Well, it, it, what I'm saying, but they, it wasn't the plan as in free agency hits. They immediately give Chase Edmonds a decent contract, and then somewhere along the way they sort of pick up Mostert for, for essentially free. So I don't know that it was their total plan, but it's happening right now, and – and the thing and is, get, is on, get on board. The reason you might not want Mostert is because you're afraid he's going to break, not because he's not good. He looks great, but he's not broken right now. And the next four matchups are Detroit, Chicago, Cleveland, and Houston. I mean, those are bottom five. Those well, are literally four of the bottom five teams. It's just you can't get better. 
I am, I'm very happy because I have him in a lot of places and my team feels different now than it did before because Raheem Mostert yeah. looks viable. And and like Dynasty, if you're a championship team making a push, I mean, you could probably trade very low for Mostert because he is, in Dynasty, he's an expiring player so i mean go yeah, offer yeah. like a third rounder and yeah. get moster yeah, absolutely i love that okay so the three best schedules for wide receiver the new orleans saints home oh, oh lave oh lave ole, ole, ole. the cincinnati <laughs> Bengals, who are already catching fire with their passing game and the los angeles chargers which makes sense with right. the uh aforementioned herbert schedule those are three chock full of of talent now do you go out and think about yeah. Jarvis Landry and Michael Thomas. Uh, I was going to say Michael Thomas is the not name. Not Landry, but y you could take the shot at Thomas. You just He looked so good, and then he's like, uh, I'm going to Michael mean, Thomas this thing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm not excited to do that. You're not going to get Olave. No. No. Because he's already great. And you're not going to get Chase. No. And you're probably not going to get Higgins. So You could get Boyd. You could get Boyd. And uh, that's still going to be a little hit and miss, unfortunately. You could look at that and say, well, the passing game is going to have a lot of success. And, you know, you know, maybe Boyd can be a flex for you. And then the Chargers, you're looking at Keenan Allen. You know, people are people who had Keenan Allen, if you didn't trade for him yet, you might be fatigued. You might be tired. You sure. finally put him back in. He scored two points. Allen's uh, somebody you could grab. And then you could look at Mike Williams while he's injured and say, hey, for the home stretch, He's playing Arizona, Las Vegas, Miami, Tennessee, Indianapolis for five straight weeks in the playoffs. He's going to help win people championships, and I have him right now on my League of Record team. I have offered multiple trades with him in it because he's injured right now, and I would... You want to win now. I need to win games, so yeah, I mean, you might be able to get him in another name that is worth picking up, probably on waivers because they're on by Josh Palmer because Mike Williams is going to miss a month, and the schedule coming up is great. Agreed. And for For Michael Thomas... And he's missed four straight games, but remember, the first two weeks of the season, he was a top 20 fantasy wide receiver. So I, if he comes back, that's a very, very big if for Michael Thomas and what he has done to us for like three straight years now. But There's if he, room. If he comes back, there is an opportunity for him to be one of those guys that just takes off right at the, at the perfect time. Yep, and then for tight ends, you basically have Evan Ingram, and the Chargers again. I mean, the Chargers' end of season schedule is fantastic for the passing game. So you're Carolina, Gerald Jacksonville, Los Angeles, the bottom three. Yeah, I didn't mention Carolina because yeah, I mean, there's no one there. No one there is going to make you tremble. You know, yeah, Tommy, a little Tommy tremble. <laughs> but, unless he's playing uh, the Cardinals. But again. Evan Ingram, Gerald yep. Everett. Yep, those are the names. And and here's the deal: we're using our our tools from the Foot Clan, if, if you go to thefantasyfootballers.com and you look at the Foot Clan tools, you can look at the strength of schedule and click the button for schedule adjusted and look at all of these in depth very easily. All right, get up to 100% dandruff protection that is never not working with head and shoulder scalp shield technology available at walmart.com. Use it every time you shampoo and see the difference. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. We've got matchups to get to, so I'm going to be very quick here with the injury updates, in part because, you know, we still have time, right? We have Friday, we have the Injury Blitz podcast, and we're going to get more information uh, throughout today. The Rams, uh, Daryl Henderson, it's an illness. That's why he didn't practice. Uh, Van Jefferson limited could make his return this week. Should make his return this week. And Kyron Williams designated to return from IR. Here we go. But McVeigh said they may take the full the full 21 days to get him back. Yeah, he mentioned we'll that see. he's not going to be there this week. Uh, Mac Jones will start in week eight. He's taken all the first team reps, 90 uh, percent of them. DK Metcalf didn't practice. Unlikely that he plays. He's trying. Tyler Lockett still limited with the hamstring, and that's limited his production. A couple of bad weeks in a row. Debo, what are we hearing? Uh, Hamstring. Yeah, he did not practice. Uh, the San Francisco 49ers have the bye week. It is a divisional matchup for them this week against the, the Los Angeles Rams. They have the bye week so, next week. Yeah, yeah, week. bye week is the next week. This week is the divisional matchup. So Debo is going to push to play, but there is a world where he's not available this week, so be prepared. 
Alan Lazard, Christian Watson, the Packers wide receivers. Lazard didn't practice. Watson is limited. Um, Aaron Rodgers came out and made headlines again by basically saying reps for certain players need to change. If you make mistakes, you need to sit and get other players in there. Christian Watson is a name to know. I mean, it's great to see him limited because he's been out of practice the last little while with this hamstring issue that has really bothered him from before the season and into the season. He certainly is someone that um, could make a splash at the end of the year. Logan Thomas limited. Jahan Dotson didn't practice with the hamstring. You can't play him, right. and uh, it's hard to know when you can again. And then Kareem Hunt, still on the Browns. We're on watch. So it could be a very interesting November 2nd or 1st is the deadline. Yes, is it the yes. first? Tuesday. Tuesday. Mike Evans is going to play tonight on Thursday Night Football. Rashad Bateman trending in the right direction, as well as Ronnie Stanley, which is big news for Lamar Jackson and uh, having more time. Mark Andrews, though. Oh, That's man. That's a big deal. Mark Andrews, is this right? Is this the most recent news we have? He's not going to play? Well, or not, not trending, trending in the right ending. direction? Okay. Yeah, we don't have anything official, but this is... Red alert. Yeah, it it's very interesting. Uh, you're playing, or uh, I'll just say I. I'm playing Lamar tonight. Like He's my quarterback in league of record. I'm not saying, well, Mark Andrews is out, so I'm not playing him. I'm going to go find a streamer. But it really sucks and limits his upside of of a, a matchup where the Bucks are so depleted that this should have been a Lamar huge bounce back game. It uh, could still happen, too, if the wide receiver, like Duvernay and, and Bateman can get some work done, but it's... It's unfortunate. I will say that if you need an emergency tight end start this week, Kate Otten is not a bad one. No, he's not. He's been pretty good, and when he gets targets, he's been putting up uh, a pretty good line for fantasy players. And so the, the matchup was was good here for Andrews. If Andrews doesn't play, are you would you be willing to just pick up Isaiah Likely? I uh, I I think it's worth a shot, but it's scary. You'd go Otten over. Likely. I would. Yes. Okay. I would. Yeah. yeah, they're like Evan Ingram is probably. On the waiver wire, like there's other there's other guys where I feel like I, I'm going to get a fine floor. In the Gus Bus, questionable, limited at practices, expected to be out there. Yeah, so the are you Gus firing up? Bus. Are you hopping on the Gus Bus, Mike? Do you have your? Uh, he is you got your pass. He is currently in. Which uh, shout out to Matthew in Florida for helping us with it with this this majestic piece. Which hopefully you joined us for the Spotify live room last night because it was a lot of fun. The, there were 22. Uh, Gus bus drops. Last <laughs> the uh, the questionable tag, it's not great. It's not what I want to see heading into a Thursday night. It's what Bateman has. It's what Stanley has. But it it makes complete sense that, Gus, I mean, the team knew when they activated Gus Edwards on to play Sunday and they gave him all those carries, they knew they had to play on Thursday. And he was just coming off the injury. So I'm presuming that the team had a plan. Beep, beep for the Gus bus to be just very limited in practice and then have him go out there again. Brooksy, let us know if there's any more Ravens updates throughout the show today. You got it. I'm watching. All right. Keep your eyes peeled. Did Mark Kare Andrews' watch Did starts Kareem now. Kareem Hunt get traded? Did that also, happen? let us know about that. Kareem Hunt watch starts now. It started uh, a few days ago. That was today's News and Notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Fantasy Forecast. All right, let's kick it off with the London game. We're back, baby. Oh, man. Set your alarms. <laughs> you know, I've known the entire week. We've talked about it so much that this game is in London, but it wasn't until this moment that I remembered what that means. That means an early, early viewing. Uh, you know how you wake up in the morning and they have those Folgers commercials and stuff where yep. it's like the best part of waking up? It, just replace that with watching Russell Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> the best part yeah, of waking up is watching Russell Wilson. Suck. Dangerous. <laughs> yeah, oh, go. thank you. Uh, two and five, the Broncos. Their season uh, is in trouble. Jacksonville's two and five as well. Hooray. DraftKings Sportsbook line, Jags minus two and a half. The over-under is 39, not even 40 points. The Broncos defense, number one against quarterbacks, number one against wideouts. You know, schedule adjusted. They're fourth against running backs. This is a great defense, which means that this is probably a very resentful defense because they should be better than two and five. Uh, I, I forgot that I had placed an under bet on the Broncos yeah, before nice. the season until just now. Oh, congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. I think I'm going to hit that. 
Russell Wilson says he's going to play after the high knees on the airplane. Uh, we, <laughs> and then K, KJ Hamler came out and said, no, no BS. Yeah. He was actually doing it. No, there was, uh, and then there was the, the, he did a press conference or, you know, like a conference, but he's talking to the reporters and he's just so happy telling them all about his shenanigans on the plane. He just laid it out like, Russ, no one likes it. What's no, the, stop do you think, it. Do you think his teammates like him? <laughs> no. No, especially when they're losing. I think that he's he can't perceive any of that stuff. No, anymore. he has no idea. He thinks he's Napoleon everyone loves Dynamite. Him. I mean, he is. He I'm, genuinely thinks everyone loves him. I'm trying to support you here, Russ, and you're you're making it very difficult. Well, let's talk fantasy here, Jason. I think you said it either on the Spotify Live show or yesterday during the podcast. You you want to avoid uh, Jacksonville offensive options outside of likely Travis Etienne. Yeah, uh, you, you have Kirk. some you have some options here with Christian Kirk, Zay Jones, Marvin Jones of of questions. I think someone will have a good game. I want to avoid them. I'm not sure where Patrick Sertan's going to be. I don't know if he's going to be on the outside on Zay Jones, if he's going to follow Christian Kirk into the slot. I do know that there's going to be a lot of disappointment, more so than fantasy output from the wide receivers. So that's where it's like, if I can... If I can bench Christian Kirk and go to a different option that I think is to play Mooney against Dallas, is that too low of a of a swap? I I do think that's a little too low. I expect the targets to be there for Christian Kirk, and um, if I had to put a dollar on whether Sertan is on him or not, I would bet that he is not. Terry McLaurin against the Colts. Yeah, I, I would play Terry McLaurin against the Col Colts. That's a good option over uh, Christian Kirk. All right, we do have an update. Didn't come from Brooks though. Came from Al Borland. Ooh. Ravens watch. Ravens watch. Thank you. It ends right now. Uh, Mark Andrews and Rashad Bateman are both hopeful they'll be able to play Ooh. tonight. Okay. Right. Okay. That was a quick, quick update. Yeah. I wish we would have had it like when we said the first update. I don't care. We've got it now. It All didn't right. exist then. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> That's uh, 30 seconds old. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, so, look, Mark Andrews, if he plays, you play him. Yes. Mike's excited because he gets uh, yes. he needs a target for Lamar Jackson. Yes, I do. I mean, Lamar does. Lamar. <laughs> <laughs> Evan Ingram, though, this might not be the week. Uh, it's it's, it's going to be a low scoring game. Yes, it's going to be a game that you, uh, you you wish you stayed asleep for. They're traveling overseas to have the Jacksonville Jaguars and Trevor Lawrence, who has not been very good when he's under pressure playing against a great defense that will put him under pressure the entire game. I cannot imagine that there's a ton of fantasy points scored from the Jacksonville Jaguars side of the ball, or NFL game points scored for that matter. I mean, Travis Etienne, he's a workhorse now. You're going to put him in. You're going to hope he gets a little bit more involved in the receiving game, but he's you know one play away from a, a good fantasy output at any point. The real question is, with Russell Wilson expected to play, can you throw Cortland Sutton in there with any confidence? Yeah. yeah. So, no. I mean, nine targets last week. I, I think I, I stay the course with Cortland Sutton, even though it's been bumpy for a couple of weeks. I agree. Um, Greg Dulcich, look, I've, if I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times, I'm sending in the D. Oh, oh, oh yeah. I'm, I'm starting Greg. Oh. I'm starting Greggy. Oh. And uh, I, I'm going to – um. I'm going to bench Kyle Pitts. I'm sending him in. Yeah. All right. Okay. okay. And then Melvin and Latavius last week, 11 rushes for Latavius, got the goal line touchdown. Melvin had 15 opportunities, just 50 total yards. Uh, you know, it, it's flip a coin for which mediocre performance you want. Yeah. I mean, uh, I think Andy and I stand on slightly different sides of this. I would put Melvin Gordon in above Latavius. Would you do the opposite? By a by a whisper. Yeah, but I do think that they're okay plays. I mean, the Jacksonville Jaguars haven't been great against the run. Mike Boone's on the IR. And that's that's a huge deal for both of them. Yeah, because you're you're gonna take a couple of targets and a couple of carries and and give them back to Gordon Latavius. I, I they're okay starts in the in the flex, but don't put them in your flex because they're in London. Put them in if you're gonna start them, put them in your running back spot. Which is a good reminder for tonight as well. Yeah, if you have somebody playing, play them in their positional spots so you have flexibility for some surprise practice injury that may or may not happen. All right, let's uh, move on to our next matchup, but first a quick break. Well, let's stick with two and five teams here. Carolina taking on the 
Atlanta Falcons, who are three and four. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, Falcons minus four. The over-under is 41. Yeah. <laughs> Andy's almost upset of the week. I like it. It's just punitive. Yeah. Against Arthur Smith. But now Carolina, I mean, their defense is good enough to s- to stop Atlanta. Yep. And uh, Atlanta is stubborn enough to be stopped. So I will go with Carolina going 2-0 and after the departure of star players. Which game ends first? The, oh, gosh. The, Bron- <laughs> the Broncos-Jaguars <laughs> that starts at 6 in the morning or the Panthers-Falcons game. This game is... Oh, man, the the pace of play for these teams, they're going to take every second possible before snapping that ball, and they're both going to run it a ton. And this game is another one that I, you know, I would bet the under on this. I'm not excited about it because Drake London and Kyle Pitts have become bench warmers until Atlanta shows me a change in philosophy because they're, they're actually trending downward. Right, they started the year with 33 right. pass attempts by Marcus Mariota. He hasn't hit 33 in the last two games combined. So um, I can't get excited. Look, could Kyle Pitts catch a touchdown? Of course, but 13 pass attempts. You know, this is a game where they can probably do that. Right, yes. this game is one where Carolina is not a huge offensive threat. So this could be a slog fest, uh, and then Arthur Smith can go to the media and say look i told you this is what works in the nfl it, this game and then we can all cry it's it is it has some interesting they're, they're not high level fantasy pieces but the falcons are favored by four tyler algier has been getting a decent amount of work you know 13 opportunities 15 16 and if they're favored and they and that comes through then it, tyler algier will be perfectly fine do you like him more than playing Foreman or Hubbard on the other side is is the question for so me. So Chuba did not practice Wednesday. I believe the update was that he was in a on the stationary bike in a non-contact jersey. So mm-hmm. I mean that's that's uh, that seems even more extreme uh for the limited or 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 the the do not practice. But Deonta Foreman he is interesting. Chuba was the better player, but Foreman had the the huge run. So I I think that he is in play. 15 for 118 last week. Yeah. And if Hubbard doesn't play, do you like Foreman over Algier? Yeah, I do. I, I would prefer Foreman over Algier. Algier, uh, you know, because they're not passing the ball at all, um, even though he does run routes and he's involved in the passing game, you wouldn't know it, kind of like Kyle Pitts. Uh, you just don't have the reception upside. So you're looking for touchdowns here. If I had to bet on a touchdown, it would be on Deonta Foreman. And then the only other piece here to really discuss, because we're not playing Drake London, is DJ Moore. And I am the, in. You're you're in. Yeah. I, I'm a little worried just because of the the total of this game and how the game could go. But matchup wise, it makes sense with no Robbie Anderson, no Christian McCaffrey. You're going to target DJ more ten times in this game, and he was good last week. He's a talented player. Where if you get the ball in his hands enough opportunities, he can break something off. So I'm fine starting DJ more. And you the, have to the, lean on the Falcons being dead last against wide receivers as well. And they're likely out with some uh, some other top corners this week. Yeah, cuz uh Terrell's not there, right? He's he is likely out and Hayward's on IR. That w- that matters a lot. I mean, AJ Terrell is awesome. Yep. All right, uh Kyle Pitts, is he going to haunt me this Halloween weekend? Uh, if I put him on the bench. I'm still no. wavering a little bit. But uh, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. Greg D. <laughs> Greg D. Me and Greg D. Are we all right? Yeah, let's move on. All right, let's do it. Uh, Chicago, three and four. Dallas is five and two. Chicago had an impressive win in New England. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, Cowboys minus nine and a half. Vegas doesn't care. Yeah. The over-under is 42 and a half. They said, I see your game in New England. And then I don't because nine and a half, that's a lot. Dallas, uh, you know, Dak is back and their defense is outstanding. Will the... Matt Eberflus Bears be able to figure out this defense doing what they did last week against a good New England defense? No, uh, not not a not a ton. New England's defense is 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 pretty good. I mean, they you know I I, I don't want to take anything away from them, and the Chicago Bears really did a great job of not being able to be stopped 
by the New England Patriots defense, but the Dallas Cowboys defense is an entire tier above the Patriots. They the the Bears haven't really faced a, a defense this good this season unless you want to include the water bowl week one number one against quarterbacks and running backs in schedule adjusted number four against wideouts pretty much Dallas shuts down every position player yeah so there's there's not much to love here if you wanted you know if you're in a two quarterback league or you're looking for value on a DraftKings lineup you can always hope in Justin Fields because of the rushing upside um Darnell Mooney has been someone that is starting to get to where you could start him. Yeah. And in and, and in general, I would say, yeah, he's a, he is a I'm flex. I'm going to give him a shot this week. Yeah? Yeah, because Dallas is going to shut down these running backs. I think there's a case that you could make for not playing either one, Montgomery or Herbert this week. Dallas is number one against the running back position. They're going to get ahead in this game. So the recipe for uh, Chicago is going to be – they're going to have to stretch the field a little bit, and that's the one area where Dallas has given up some points. I mean, not a lot. But, yeah, but but Mooney is a really good player. So yes. I think the arguments you make towards like DJ Moore's possible success from certain week to certain week, it just lies in, is he a really good player that will have some opportunities? I'm willing to take that chance this week. Like I'm playing him over like a Garrett Wilson. Yeah, I, I would do that as well. Uh, Justin Fields has taken 27. Or Michael Gallup. Ooh. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah, Other that's side of the interesting So Michael there. Gallup, I do really... forget that he has to come back from an injury and prove himself. No, that it's a good point. I've I've uh, I've been paying a lot of attention when he came back and went straight to sixty seven percent of snaps. Got got a couple deep targets. The next week went to eighty percent of snaps. It was like okay, Gallup is healthy now. Dak's coming back. Everything should be great. But at this point, I have taken the I have to wait and see it first approach because if you keep putting Gallup out while he is scoring absolutely no fantasy points six points three weeks ago two points two weeks ago a goose egg last week just because he's done it in the past and we haven't even seen Dak really I mean one game back he wasn't great first game this season wasn't great so yeah Gallup is on the bench right now well, and uh, one of the big question marks in Dallas is the running back room. Ezekiel Elliott trending towards not playing, not practicing. He came out, though, and said, look, I can play without practicing. He thinks it's soft to sit, even if you're in pain. He said, pain is temporary. I'm not soft. He wants to be out there with his guys. Matthew Betts gave us some injury information. He says it's a hyperextension injury which leads to a bone bruise in the joint behind the kneecap. Very painful. Um, Dallas goes straight into a bye. There's a lot that, I mean, and they can win this game with yes. Tony Pollard at running back. So logic says he should sit. Logic but, says he should But his sit. giant. A lot of the reporting is saying that he's going to sit. I will, I will personally be surprised if he sits. This is not. Okay, so this, are you playing him? Because the, the, the Bears... Ninth against quarterback, fourth against wide receiver, fifth against tight end, but 26th against fantasy running backs. The matchup is very good for Dallas on the ground. I'm, I am I would play Ezekiel Elliott, and I would play Tony Pollard. I'd, if, I'd play both of them. Yeah. If Whoever's active in the running game is, pro, is in my lineup. All right, then uh, the other question mark here is just Dalton Schultz, what you saw from him last week. More involved. Uh, he did end up with five targets, caught all five of them, 49 yards. I still think he is uh, he's going to work his, himself into consistent production, assuming he stays healthy. Yep. Yeah, CeeDee Lamb, you play him. Dalton Schultz is, is still an interesting trade for target for me. Miami at four and three, taking on the Detroit Lions, who are one and five. DraftKings Sportsbook line, Dolphins minus three and a half on the road. The over-under is 51.5. Here we go. Yes. This game, I mean, Miami's defense is bad. But bad. They just lost their safety. You know who's worse? The Detroit Lions yeah, defense. Yeah, baby. Let's go. I'm very excited about the pieces here. I made an intentional effort to trade for Tua to fill in for Justin Herbert this week. Are we getting uh Detroit Seattle action uh, here? So, uh, the way yeah. that I look the way that I look at this game is entirely on the the health of DeAndre Swift and Amon Ross St. Brown. Because if those two guys are active and out there, 
and it seems like they should be, then this should be one of those, uh, yeah, the the Detroit-Seattle game where no one could stop anyone and both offenses can move the ball and you're just going to – this is like one of the games of the week. But if Amon Ra, which I do not understand – I do not understand this new concussion protocol thing. He doesn't have a concussion. He didn't have a concussion. Still not he, out of protocol. Here's my worry. Here's my worry is that maybe – Detroit plays like they did the last two weeks. The last two weeks which, were on the road against good defenses, though. Correct. That's true. Correct. New England, Dallas. You're right. You're right. They, But they scored six total points, so it freaks me out a little bit. Yeah. Like, and, between the two weeks. Uh, for sure. I get it. But no Swift, no Amon Ross St. Brown on the road against right. great defenses. Right. Now you're at home in your dome with your great offensive line. If those weapons come back against the Dolphins, this is going to be a barn burner. DeAndre Swift was a full practice oh, on baby. Wednesday. So. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. I believe that he will be back. Does that mean you have the confidence to play golf over a Jimmy G streaming option? That I, I or would. a Matthew Stafford? You'll yeah. hear more about it oh. in oh, just a minute. Oh, that's yeah. confidence. Yeah, I'm for it because you you want some upside. And Garoppolo, if Garoppolo hits as a streamer, it's he kept the boat on course. If 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 Goff hits as a streamer, he can actually help you win. All right, so you've got a lot of starts in this game. DeAndre Swift, if he's active, play him. Amon yep. Ra, yep. yep. If he's active, you play him. TJ Hawkinson, yes. If you if he's active, you play him. What do you guys think? Because they are, you know, uh, uh, DJ Chark is out. Josh Reynolds did not practice on Wednesday. Khalif Raymond, the last two weeks, has seen a 22% target share and a 24% target share. Man, you know things are going poorly when that happens. Yeah. Sure, but here's it, this is an opportunity. I mean, to me, Khalif Raymond's name is really important for a wide receiver pivot option in a DFS lineup if Amon Ra is not playing. Five for 75 last week. But if Amon Ra is active, I'm not worried about Khalif Raymond. Tyreek, Jalen Waddell, put him in your lineup. Great matchup for Raheem Moster. Yes. Last four games for Moster, 19 opportunities a game, 68% of snaps. Uh, he looks great. He just finally got Tua back. I mean, Mostert's been playing well. Without Tua. And then Tua came back, got into the end zone last week. Mike Gesicki, um, higher route percentage, uh, participation and more targets lately. Yep, I'm, I'm in. He's you like him more than Greg D? Yes. Because of the matchup? Yes. Yeah. I like him more than Greg D for a number of yeah. reasons. He's not a rookie. We still have only a two-game sample size of Greg D's involvement. He's in a much higher scoring game. He is even more of an athletic freak than Greg Dulcich. So, yeah, I, I, I like Gasicki better. I like Gasicki, and I want to specify, I like Gasicki more this week, but if your options are, well, I have to, Greg D's on the bye next week. So, I guess I would be, I would be picking up Gasicki to play him and hoping that I can pick up Dulcich next week. The Arizona Cardinals at three and four, taking on the Minnesota Vikings, who are five and one at home. DraftKings Sportsbook line, Vikings minus three and a half. The over-under is 49 points. We uh, got to witness the return of DeAndre Hopkins. It was significant. It meant a lot to this offense and Kyler Murray. Do you have some optimism right now around Arizona being able to get things done? The Vikings defense has not been awful, but it has not been a top 15 defense. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, is Kyler somebody that you think is going to bounce back in, in a fantasy way? I do think that there is reason for optimism. You're going to have Robbie Anderson more involved in the game plan. He is a significant upgrade from A.J. Green. Rondale moves back to the slot, like Mike's been pointing out, and the offense clicks with Hopkins. So for the first time in a while, you have an Arizona Cardinals offense that appears to be able to move the ball. This is a uh, rematch in the same situation, same con conditions uh, as last year's game. Uh, the Arizona Cardinals won 34-33 in Minnesota in a very high-scoring affair. So that's always, you know, we, we've had a, a couple of these repeats from last year where um, the, the NFL has, the scheduling department has put a couple of these matchups as repeats from last year that were huge high-scoring affairs, and all of them so far have hit being another repeat performance of a high-scoring affair. So I, I do like this matchup, and I don't usually like uh, thinking that the Cardinals games are going to take the over. What's interesting here, 
<clears throat> is the pace of play should be way up. The Cardinals run a lot of plays uh, on a on a weekly basis. You know, weeks two through six, top ten in total plays in each of those weeks. The Minnesota Vikings, meanwhile, have been in very tight games, except they played Miami without Tua a couple weeks ago, uh, and they won twenty four to sixteen. But other than that, oh, you know, they they were. Barely squeaking out wins, top 12 in, in terms of total plays for those games as well. So I think there is a there is a huge opportunity for fantasy goodness. Pick a Cardinal wide receiver to flex that isn't named DeAndre Hopkins. I'll still go Rondale. I, I will go Robbie Anderson. I, I think his opportunity is going to be there this week. Um, but Rondale did have – Rondale was 7 for 114 last year against the Vikings, so it's not a bad pick, Mike. Uh, Zach Ertz still in play, right? Yes. You like Zach Ertz or Greg D? Zach, Zach Ertz. Ertz. Okay. I, I mean, ask him for a friend. It's unfortunate, but it's it's Zach Ertz. Dalvin Cook, you play him. Justin Jefferson, don't be silly. Yep. But Adam Thielen, Irv Smith, are those options this week against Car uh, against the Cardinals' thirty first ranked tight end defense? Adam yeah. Thielen has seen seven targets or more since week two. In the last month, three of those four games, he's been a top twenty four wide receiver. He looks like he he's not going to be elite Adam Thielen again, but he's in wide receiver two range. Yeah, and, and Irv Smith is my favorite streamer this week. <laughs> Why is that, Jason? Because he's playing the Cardinals. <laughs> and if you play the Cardinals, you have a great game at the tight end position. The Las Vegas Raiders are two and four. They take on the two and five New Orleans Saints. The DraftKings Sportsbook line Raiders favored on the road by one and a half. The over under is forty nine and a half. We know that Andy Dalton has been named the starter. And it's been noted that Jameis is healthy. This is what uh, Dennis Allen called an offensive decision. Okay. So uh, that does make sense considering they play on the offensive side of the football. So if it was a defensive decision, that would be weird. That would be super weird. We decided based on our defense we need to go with Andy Dalton. Now Dalton was prolific in terms of production, touchdowns, yards, but also interceptions against Arizona. You know, I like that he threw it 47 times. Sure. Um, I I certainly think this game is interesting for the passing offense for New Orleans because they're not favored. It's a high over under. Chris Olave, he's got he's got a 31.5% target per route run over the last five games. If you watch the Arizona game, Dalton takes the snap, and he stares at Olave for a little while, decides if he can throw it to him, and then moves on. And he usually can. That's the great thing about Olave. He knows how to get open. He has been phenomenal. There is no world that exists where Chris Olave is on someone's bench. If you have him on your roster, you must find a way to get him involved in this game because this could be a real back-and-forth affair. The New Orleans Saints defense, which has usually been very, very scary, they're banged up in the secondary. I don't believe that – is Marshawn Lattimore uh, – he, He's going to miss. Yeah, yeah so miss. if he misses, Devontae Adams is going to be awesome. He's going to have 150 and two. And so, yeah, you're going to have to throw the ball as the Saints. I, I really like this matchup. And uh, Alvin Kamara? It, you keep playing him and you hope that – Taysom Hill will stop stealing his touchdowns. He hasn't been super without the uh, without getting into the end zone. He hasn't been super, but he's been a top 20 back the last three weeks, top 10, two of those three weeks. That's without touchdowns. The, he is, to me, like, a, I think he's a great play. Uh, I would I would love to have him. I would love to trade for him right now because there's there's nothing on the field that says he's lost anything. The touchdowns just haven't come his way. I think those – those rebounds. He doesn't finish the season with zero touchdowns. Now, the touchdowns have ex gone Josh Jacobs' way in four consecutive weeks. In fact, he scored uh, six touchdowns in the last three games, finishing one, three, and one at the running back position. He's as much of a lock right now as anybody in fantasy football. Yeah, because utilization rates. I mean, he, he is one of the bell cow uh, running backs out there. <laughs> Moo. Moo. He says as he gets the ball, move uh, was, out my right way, there. out yeah. my way. So wow, uh, the, the running back rushing share attempts in the last three weeks. Yeah. Ninety three percent, ninety one percent, ninety five percent. Saints are 21st against running back schedule adjusted. Yeah, they, they've been a phenomenal shut down the running back defense over the last several years. And uh, now I, I've got to like adjust mentally because I look at the Saints and I go, 
Oh, you that, you know, they're going to shut down the oh, road. Hit it. Oh, hit it. I don't have the button. Somebody else hit I it. I got it. Breaking news. The Chiefs have traded for Kadarius no Tony. way. Oh, my a word. A third and a sixth round pick. My dynasty team is singing songs in the streets wait, wait, right wait, now. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Is that tweet? Is that tweet gone already? Did we get? Did wait we get, a minute. Wait a minute. Is this not true? Well, I, we no? got. Okay, no, it's still there. It's still there. It just didn't load the first time I clicked on it. This is from the Underdog NFL account. Well, wow. we may have to edit this out of the podcast if that's a. No, it's real. <laughs> it's real. <laughs> the Chiefs have traded. So this was part of the, the uh, the maneuvering. Yeah. Kadarius Tony to Why the Chiefs. Did you, I mean, number one, third round pick, okay, and yeah. a sixth. I I totally get why. I I, I got to stop myself of when you watch Kadarius Tony all last year. It was I've never seen anybody on the field look like Tyreek Hill. Yeah, the way that Kadarius Tony does. Now does his hamstrings but improve in Kansas City? Oh, is yes. He, is he healthy now? Is he just like no? I mean, no, the I'm Chiefs not even don't trade a third and a six for a player they don't believe can be healthy. The 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 the, the Giants. What? Yeah, no. Come on. It's not like like we joke about Kadarius Tony's 37 hamstring uh, injuries that he's had this season. He just goes back and forth. But he is going to play football again. Are we and sure? now he if he's a part of a franchise that knows how to take care of players, knows how to get the most out of them, I cannot imagine a I mean there is no better landing spot I to don't. utilize his specific Skill sets. I'm still not seeing any the tweets Chiefs. from Rappaport or Schefter, though. I, I've I've seen some uh, verified NFL insiders. Uh, the score is reporting it. Okay. Yeah. So I've seen real. multiple. Uh, give, give me a transaction give, alerts. Do it when you see it come through on another source to calm Mike's fears. Yes. Please let us know. Yes. Let me let me know for sure. Um. I mean, we knew that they were in in the hunt. Yeah. I'm seeing it from PFN. Yeah. It's Fabiano. There, okay, uh, okay. I mean, I, I don't... Yeah. Wait, is it like... Ian Harditz said, uh, this is why we keep Kadarius Tony on our fantasy squad, even though it makes no sense. <laughs> uh, it's being reported okay, all Jordan, over the place. Yeah, Jordan Schultz is reporting it, too. So... What? Yeah, I mean, the, the thing is, is... Kadarius Tony is unbelievable to watch play football. So other other people apparently believe that. Do you, okay, so guys, uh, second half sleeper, Kadarius, Kadarius Tony. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's go look at your waiver wires. That's called uh, second round pick Sky Moore continues to fumble the ball every opportunity he gets. I mean, and it's just another weapon. Like I don't know what his fantasy yeah. significance is going to be because I I mentioned it last week. Like there's no names on the back of the jerseys for the wide receivers in Kansas City, and I don't think Tony has the ability to come in on day one and, and dominate but no. but long term he it's very interesting he doesn't have like the body of work the pedigree but in terms of the skills that we've seen from this version of mvs this version of juju smith schuster the highest ceiling is easily Kadarius. yeah Stone. It, a lot of people have open waivers we you know none of the leagues we play in are are really open you just uh, uh wow you, so uh, right now if you would like to pause this podcast and check your personal waivers and we're back i hope Kadarius tony was out there available for you there, there's some reactions going on here in the studio yeah because i i'm just gonna check one thing real quick on our uh league of record <laughs> still rostered i'm sure uh it because it's gabe oh yeah. no <laughs> for what <laughs> what the, nobody look, likes Kadarius tony more than uh our good friend well, gabe. everyone has a league manager where like things just seem to fall into their lap and you're like it should not have worked it nothing you have done should should have worked and man congratulations if you have Kadarius tony all right uh we were were we wrapping the saints match up here is that what we were doing Darren yes. Waller limited. Doesn't seem like he's going to play. If he did, it's pretty nerve-wracking. All right. <laughs> I'm, I'm very flustered. You're here. flustered. Well, let's do our starts of the week then. Starts of the week. I just remembered our family league is open waivers. Oh, and I just got Kadarius <laughs> Tony. Um, that's great news. Thanks, Jay. You're welcome. <laughs> what a turd. Into the starts of the week we go at quarterback. I'm going with Tua. 
Great home matchup against the Detroit Lions, giving up 32 points a game to opposing offenses, which is insane. I mean, that's a lot of points to average in terms of what you're giving up. Tua has two performances in the top 12, has that monster week. I am very excited about Tua this week. I think it could be a league-winning type of performance. And I'm going to take the quarterback on the other side of the ball from him, and I'm really hoping that Amon Ross St. Brown is active and healthy for this game because if so, Jared Goff should have a monstrous performance. Uh, Byron Jones, still out. Nick Needham and Trill Williams, they went on IR. Their starting safety, Brandon Jones, for the Miami Dolphins, now out for the season with an ACL injury. They are really hurting in their secondary. If Swift is back, Amon Ra is back, the Lions are at home. This should be a, a barn burner. Yeah. I want options. I'm for it, and I've got Kirk Cousins against Arizona. Really? Arizona is 27th in adjusted uh, in schedule adjusted fantasy points. Kirk Cousins, since 2020, averages 274 and two passing touchdowns. And I think that this game has a chance to give us some delicious fantasy. Could points. I interest you in 244 passing yards and three passing touchdowns? Because that's what he did last year in yep. the same match. He is happy. not. Uh, it's crazy because he did finish fifth at the position two weeks ago. He has not had a three touchdown game this year. Maybe this is the time the Cardinals say, "Here you go." Yeah, they've been friendly. All right. Next at running back. <laughs> nope. Uh, did you, didn't you? Did you already do your quarterback? Yeah, you mm -hmm. did. Uh -huh. Jared Goff. I, Jared I may Goff. have been thinking I about Kadarius all, Tony. It's flustered. flustered. It's Kadarius. I apologize. Season. I will give you my running back since okay, I started sure the segment. Thing. Raheem Mostert playing the same Kadarius Detroit Lions. Tony. Um, look, the Detroit Lions are the second worst team in football against running backs. How good has Raheem Mostert been? I shared this with you guys yesterday. Over the last four weeks, his 17-week pace. 323 opportunities, 1,300-plus rushing yards, eight touchdowns. That's a bona fide stud at the running back position on an offense that can get the ball down the field. Raheem, the dream, while he's healthy, yes. Mostert. Yeah, that's what he's been doing, and now he's got an even better matchup than he's had. Do you remember how many leagues I had Raheem Mostert in last year before oh. the injury? I remember it how many all leagues you're in. Yeah. Yeah, I was, yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, uh, for, for my running back start of the week, it's Tony Pollard. This is with Zeke. This is without Zeke. Obviously, if Zeke's not there, he is going to be a, a complete smash play against Chicago. But Zeke's probably going to be active, and I'm telling you, put Tony Pollard in your flex because he, he is going to be a good play. The Bears are 26 in schedule adjusted in fantasy points given up against running backs. You're talking about big-time home favorites, which is always great for running backs. Uh, so I, I think Tony Pollard, you know, he's been one of those players. You're you're playing the matchup every week. This is a put him in. And I've got Devin Singletary against the Green Bay Packers. Oh, I hope you're right. Over the last month, Green Bay is 25th in schedule adjusted points to the to the running back position. The last time we saw Singletary, it was a 22 opportunity game. Three of the last four games, he has seen at least five targets. Singletary is getting worked into B. You know, bell cowie, as Jason would say. Moo. Mm. <laughs> All right. Wide receiver Chris Olave. Oh, yeah. Start of the week against uh, a, a very vulnerable defense, and uh, he's just that good. Over his last four starts on pace for 170 targets, 100 receptions, 1,500 receiving yards, eight touchdowns, has not finished outside the top 16 in any of those games, despite one of them being knocked out with a concussion. He is a great, he's not great. good, but great player. He's great. And the Raiders live their uh, defensive lives for one purpose, which is giving up points to the opposing team. They do it so well. At wide receiver, I'm going with T. Higgins. Higgins should be back to full health now. He dealt with that ankle injury. He's due for a big game. He is due for a big game because Joe Burrow is airing it out, having monstrous performances. The Cleveland matchup is great. The last two weeks, even while T. Higgins might not have been fully healthy, 17 targets. So, yeah, it's due. I think the big week is this one. And I'm going, it's a little bit of a steel underpants play. I understand that, but it's DJ Moore against the Atlanta Falcons. Last week against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, he turned in a 48% target share because there's no one else to throw the ball to for PJ Walker. Uh, Atlanta is the best wide receiver matchup currently, and those targets will be a-flowing. How dare you? How dare I? How dare you besmirch Terrace Marshall Jr.'s name? Oh, I'd, 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 he did that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't blame me. Shout out to Wandale Robinson. Sure. After this Tony trade he, as the, well. The, the, the backup winner? Yeah, I mean, he was already getting involved, and, and they're, you know, we're not waiting for Tony to come back. 
Yeah, he's definitely a winner in this. And scenario. Galladay doesn't come back, so they they've got what they have at wide receiver. Yeah, and Wandale's leading the way. So my tight end, if he plays, which he should play because he hasn't been practicing, but he's been playing. T.J. Hawkinson against Miami, uh, great opportunity at home to get back on the right path for the offense. Hawkinson, you just you brought up Khalif Raymond's name because of the injuries and the problems they have at pass catcher positions in Detroit. Hawkinson will have that opportunity. Uh, I'm going with Irv Smith Jr., my favorite start this week. I always start the tight ends against Arizona and Seattle right now. Arizona's 31st against tight ends. If you adjust for schedule, they're 31st against tight ends. They just stink. Players who've had big games against them, Kelsey, obviously, Waller, Higby, Goddard, Juwan Johnson. Yeah, baby. Even Tommy Trimble had his most targets, receptions, and yards of the season against Arizona. Irv Smith has worked into some game plans more so than others. They're going to work him in this week. And I'm going Mike Kosicki against the Detroit Lions. This is the third best matchup for the tight end position. Uh, we laid out there is a high chance of a shootout here with a 51.5 over under. And he has seen his targets per route run increase in three straight weeks. They are starting to get him more involved. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Jason Moore's Ironclad, Locked and Loaded, 100% Guaranteed Boom Boom Kicker of the Week. Fully formed from the sun, I began to run, and I don't want to sound too crass, but my body was hardy, looking like Tom Hardy while playing the Bills Tyler Bass. Yes, Mike. Okay. It was it was you, a hearty hearty. You you rhymed hearty yes. with hearty. Yes. Hearty ha with yes. hearty. Those are two different words, young man. Uh Yeah, but yeah, you, Mike and I both had the same thought. You can say them the same. Yeah. Yeah, they sound the same. Yeah. That's welcome to uh No, it's in like exactly the same. Yeah. Well, you're welcome. <laughs> no, thank you. Great. Thank you, Jason. Uh, that was awesome. Tomorrow, guess what? Huh. I don't get shamed. We have the wheel of shame on tomorrow's episode. More matchups. Uh, I think we'll have stopped reacting to the Kadarius Tony news by then. And a reminder, rankings, start, sit tool, all of the Foot Clan tools, all of the resources. This is go time for your fantasy season. So uh, avail yourself. The fantasyfootballers.com is the website. Join the foot.com for the fantasy football community. And, um, well, that is it for today's show. Thank you for joining us. Hearty. That's that's Hearty. not even a word. Hearty yeah. is a word. Yeah, it is. It is? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'll see you tomorrow, everybody. Goodbye. <laughs> Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.